Hey everybody, it's Charlie. We got new Flash to break down. Let's do it. Flash Family is back. Probably one of the best episodes of the season next to Therefore I Am, that Thinker origin story. So there's a new round of the Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter, just be a subscriber and leave a Flash related comment on the video. And obviously careful for spoilers from the episode. But number 10, the entire episode takes place over the course of a couple minutes. So I love the way that they played with that clock at the beginning of the episode. And they're really careful to tease concepts. I felt like they did a good job weaving the logic and covering all their bases. Like how come they couldn't do X, Y, or Z thing with the bomb? They had all those different explainers for why that wasn't possible. And it was mostly because running it out of town would speed up the reaction. And also the bomb had already gone off when she alerted Barry to the fact that she had the trigger. But they also like have the speed equation up on the board at the beginning, they're in the speed lab. It was a very speedster heavy episode. So I felt like that's also one of the reasons why it was one of the best of the season. They're always a lot of fun. Even if you don't open portals to the speed force or cause giant showers of speed force lightning, but the other thing they did in this episode was sort of remind you of a couple of the big core concepts in the big twist of the season. Like Barry and Iris are married, they're husband and wife. They haven't spent a whole lot of time addressing that or them just doing regular people stuff. Like most of the season has been about their fight against the thinker, but there's a lot of other family stuff going on. Like this is a Flash family episode. There's also the literal family that they will eventually have because at some point in the future, presumably they'll have the twins. Then they'll be what you would think of when you think of a traditional family. But the thing that Iris says that they sort of bring back around to the solution of the episode is let the answer come to you. So he was literally using that device at the end of the episode to let the lightning come to him. So I always like when they turn those metaphors, especially if they seem like offhanded things into literal solutions to the episode by the very end. Stray Observations 2, Wet Futon Ralph Dibney is moving into Star Labs, even though he wasn't in this episode, but they just want to let you know that he's going to be living at Star Labs eventually. Number nine, Jesse Quick comes back. They have all those funny moments and her arc is all about the death of her mother, Harrison Wells. You learn a little bit about the backstory and why it was she kicked him off the team and they resolved it in a really beautiful way. So number eight was actually their ending of the story where he uses the neural inhibitor to literally allow her into his mind so that she can hear his thoughts about her mother and sort of experience it with him. So they're on the same page now. But I'm also curious to see if they use that twist for something else later this season. Like allow someone to listen to the thoughts of another person. That could be used in the fight against Devote, but it could also be used for more fun things on Team Flash. Remember what Sabotar said, using the neural inhibitor against Devote? They might just use it in a way that you didn't think that they were going to use it. I like that they also reference Wally. Wally's not here as if she came to talk to Wally. Like, no, just here for dad stuff. She's going to be on Legends of Tomorrow in their next episode. That visit might have been inspired by the moment she shared with her father. Like, you know, telling the people that you care about how you feel and communicating with them in a more meaningful way. But number seven, the bomb goes off and you get that early montage of them trying a bunch of different things. Like they try Killer Frost, they try Cisco's vibing. None of it's going to work. You notice that everybody who's not a speedster gets tired really fast and breaks into a flop sweat almost immediately just because their bodies can't handle flash time. Number six, the flash time explainer. So you get a much better picture of how things work. And if you thought it was weird the way they film things, because like sometimes they'd be in flash time running at super speed. I think what they were doing there was just forcing perspective because like the best way to visualize it is when Barry is running very slowly across the city. Like that kind of gives you an idea that he's running at super speed, but we're seeing it more in his time. So it's almost like he's just jogging, but technically inside flash time, if you saw another speedster running, it would just look like they were jogging like a normal person. But stray observation, Iris did not sweat, nor did she get tired while they were in flash time. And she was in there for about the same amount of time as Cisco and Killer Frost. So it doesn't necessarily mean anything, but just keep that in the back of your mind as we learn more about Iris through the rest of the episodes. Number five, Jay Garrick was awesome. John Wesley Shipp is always great when he's on the show, but I love the idea that he is just like, oh, hell no, when Barry says that they blow up the speed force with the bomb. You have no idea what's going to happen. And he does actually explain it in a really good way. It's pan-dimensional. So you blow up the speed force, it blows up everywhere in the multiverse. It all the speedsters, both good and bad, lose their connection to it. 
So even though some good would come of it, you'd save the city from being destroyed by the bomb, and you'd also get rid of Eobard Thawne's speed. The potential costs completely outweigh that, because you have to keep in mind, this is the entire multiverse we're talking about, and we have one city of a couple hundred thousand people, so what are the lives of a couple hundred thousand people against the lives of all the people in the multiverse that flashes potentially save over their lifetimes. So you can argue about that in the comments, right or wrong, whatever you think the decision was. But I think we can all say that we don't want them to blow up the speed force anytime soon. Barry had that same aw oh, hell no when Jesse Quick was like, why don't we just travel back in time and fix this? And he has to give her that flashpoint explainer, like, just trust me, bad things happen to the people you love when you mess with the timeline. <laughs> Reverse, huh? That's irony for you. So, uh, what should we call this uh, brave new world that you've whipped up for us? I was thinking Flashpoint. Number three, the actual solution is something that predates Barry coming back on the show. That's why Iris had to remind him and why Barry didn't know about it, because after they brought him out of the Speed Force, nobody really sat him down to explain the mechanics of how they brought him out. They didn't tell him about that device. So Iris is like, when we brought you out, Cisco created this device for calling out the Speed Force. So use this as the lightning rod to literally draw the lightning out. So I always like it when they reference comic book stuff like that too, because I think the show has addressed the idea of Iris being Barry's lightning rod, but not very frequently. Usually it's when Barry's been stuck in the Speed Force and they've used Iris to help draw him out. I think it was back during season two and they kind of stepped around it during season three when he came out of the Speed Force. Barry, come home to me. But number two, of course, the idea is what are the consequences of this? Because remember what happened when he came out of the Speed Force at the beginning of the season? He doused all the bus metas in dark matter energy, and we found out that somebody else tipped the terrorist off to where this bomb was. So it sounds like DeVoe wanted Barry to open a portal to the Speed Force again so that he could get access to that dark matter. For what purpose, we don't know yet. Because you can do just about anything with it. They haven't explained the Speed Force well enough to narrow that down. They're very ambiguous about what it's capable of. And that's just so they can have fun with it later on. If they want to come up with some crazy story, like, ah, we have the Speed Force creating some more metas. But you can post all your theories in the comments below. Like, it'll take a couple more episodes before we'll learn what that is. But remember, this is really like the back half of the season. So it's not like they're going to drag this out that much. But number two was Jay Garrick effectively retiring or saying that he was getting ready to retire. I think, you know, by the end of the show's run, the idea is that he becomes retired and Jesse Quick takes his place as the speedster of Earth 3. I'm thinking about trying my hand at something new. Like what? For starters, training someone to take over. There's another flash on your earth? There will be. As soon as I'm done training her. Her? When do you think we're good with the Speed Force? Well, if not, we'll find out soon enough. So if there was any confusion about when he said that a her would be training to replace him, he was probably talking about Jesse Quick, not some unknown female speedster that we haven't met yet. Because I think the idea is, is that Harrison Wells will eventually go back to Earth 2, so they won't have as much of a need for a speedster, but you never know. Like, the show is just building room for more speedsters to appear. The actress that plays Jesse Quick was actually just cast on another TV show, so I think that she's not going to be quite as available next season. So I think it is totally possible they use Wally more or they bring more speedsters on the TV show in the future. They just have more room for them in the narrative. But let it be known that Jay Garrick, Jesse Quick will always come back to the show. I did that whole big explainer about Mark Hamill coming back as the trickster, waiting till John Wesley's ship was available at the same time. So when they come back, they might come back together in an episode. But number one, of course, was Coffee Shop Girl coming back in a, in a really weird twist, too. So she was meeting Caitlin and Harrison Wells. Like she said, she was meeting someone for the first time. She was wearing Caitlin's metahuman dampener choker from the first episode again. Caitlin didn't notice it or say anything about it. I'm really very, very sorry. Don't worry about it. Good luck with your meeting. I hope it goes well. Thanks. It did. 
But I think part of the idea of this too, part of her mission, whatever mission she's on, is meeting all the different members of Team Flash. And these were just the next two on her list. So this kind of explains why she's using Jitters because all of the Team Flash members come to Jitters every once in a while. So there's still a couple people that she hasn't met most notably Iris and Cecile. Cecile's pregnant. I know there's like 50% of people that want Coffee Shop Girl to be Cecile's baby. The other 50% want her to be Iris's baby and be one of the Tornado Twins. I will go on record as saying I'll be super, super disappointed if it turns out that it's Cecile's baby. I'm hoping that we find out that Iris is pregnant in the final episode, but that's still several weeks away. So just look for more clues as we go along. We'll see more of Coffee Shop Girl, so we'll get some more evidence about what it is that she's actually up to, besides just trying to meet all the different members of Team Flash and scribbling the same symbols that Barry was writing when he came out of the Speed Force. We're gonna need more diapers. <laughs> But let me know in the comments, after this episode, what is your favorite episode of season four so far? I'll do a trailer video for Run Iris Run tomorrow. We already know a little bit about how she gets her powers and the mechanics of everything and the timeline. So that should be up pretty early in the morning. I've also got some new Witcher because, speak of Mark Hamill, the Witcher TV series might be casting him as one of the bigger characters. So congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, Milan Abraham. Please private message me so I can get your contact details. Click here for my Infinity War Black Order preview and click here for that Legends of Tomorrow Wally West video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.